This video is really a follow-up to a video I released not too long ago where I shared a strategy to basically automate the entire workflow from research to design to uploading. Specifically, I used it in the Halloween context. I uploaded them to Marielle, my fiance's merch account, which recently got tiered up, so she had the upload slots available. I'm gonna share the process with you one more time as I kind of teased yesterday that I would if you guys were interested. And then I'm gonna show you the results to show you that it actually worked, okay? So let's get to it. So I'm gonna walk you through the entire process again, then I'm gonna show you the results, and if you stick around till the end, we can apply what we learned to try to find opportunities in Thanksgiving and Christmas. So to start, we're gonna jump into Merch Dominator for niche research help, by the way, if you don't sell on Amazon Merch, they actually have an Etsy feature planned. It's not out yet, or depending on when you watch this video, it might be. Uh, but if you haven't used Merch Dominator, they also gave me a 20% off code to share with you guys. So check that out. I'm going to jump on over to where it says MBA and KDP, and then I'm going to click best sellers. Now, by default, it's just going to show us the current best selling products on Amazon Merch. I like to first go to advanced options, then go to hide brand and click yes, then click search. Now, initially what I did, because this was, you know, a month before Halloween probably, I just type in Halloween into the best sellers uh, search bar and it's only going to show us products indexed on Halloween. Ultimately, I scrolled through them. I start finding inspiration from, you know, a lot of the text based designs like this one that says this is my Halloween costume. Uh, meow, I'm a cat, you know, simple text based designs like this. You know, I can sell these all day. It's not that they have to be text-based, but the, there's a little bit of an elegance and simplicity to text-based designs. If you introduce graphics, just make sure you don't mess something up and make the design suck, all right? It's a lot harder to do with symmetric text-based designs. It's a lot easier to do with graphics. I'm just saying if you're not good at design or you, you're not sure that you're good at design, I say start simple. Text-based uh, is a great place to start. Anyways, I mentioned this in the previous video, but we ultimately ended up with pretend I'm A. That was the niche that we found that we said, hey, we can do a lot with this. We can use automation and scale this out. Look at all the different shirts. Pretend I'm a tree and they put on a green shirt. Pretend I'm a crab. They put it on a red shirt. If we scroll, I'm sure there's other colors. Uh, blueberries are indexed. Pre school bus. Pretend I'm a traffic cone behind me. Pretend I'm a flamingo in the pink shirt, right? There's a lot of potential here. So what I thought we could do is go to chat GPT and write a simple prompt, like write me a list of 20 things that are green, non plural form. Then I run the prompt. And look at this leaf, apple, emerald, cucumber, broccoli, grasshopper, kale, lime, avocado, kiwi, fern, etc. So then I save a list as a CSV that I can feed into design automation in Adobe Illustrator, or you can use Canva, right? Make a simple text-based design using these as inspiration, using what we just saw on Merch Dominator as inspiration. It doesn't need to be more complicated than this. So just to show you what it'll look like, it'll look something like this, pretend I'm a, and then the text variable, okay? But I don't actually have the picture of the shirt in the background. I'm just, you know, showing that, you know, basically what the output's gonna look like on the final product. But ultimately what I'm really doing is just running the uh, text prompts with a transparent background and it will automatically download those PNGs for me. And I always set the file name to the variable. So if I'm creating pretend I'm a tree, it's going to be saved as tree.png, which I can then use when I use upload automation so that it feeds that variable into the um, ultimately what becomes the title, the brand, the bullet points, etc. Okay. I already did a previous video where I shared the exact process. I'll link to that in the YouTube cards and in the description below, but this is the outcome. All right. I shared the strategy with you and now I'm showing you, Hey, follow up. It worked, right? Did it, is, was it gonna work? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Well, pretend I'm nutmeg sold uh, five times. We had pretend I'm garbage truck, which should have said pretend I'm a garbage truck, but you know, hey guys, you know how I have that saying, make it work for you. This is me making it work for me, all right? Cause I could have spent a lot longer on this process and made everything perfect, but you know what? I made it work for me and you know, we're what, 11, 12 sales better for having done the work and they're not perfect. And yeah, I get it. They should be perfect, but you know, it's not a perfect world, all right? We have other stuff going on here. <laughs> I'm running Marielle's merch account for her basically in this example, you know, and then sharing it with you. So for, I'm gonna ask for forgiveness anyways. Pretend I'm salt, that's sold once on the on the light gray shirt. Pretend I'm hibiscus. And just so you guys know, the lists for these, I keep separate. So I have ChatGPT, write me a list of things that are pink. Hibiscus is one of those. I run that upload automation. By the way, when I do, I use the save publish settings feature in Amazon Merch. So what I can do is I can say, okay, I'm done uploading 
doing the green shirts. Now I'm gonna upload the pink shirts. I make pink available. Then I go down here where it says save publish settings. I click that button. After clicking that button, every time the create uh, wizard loads this page, the, the creation create new product wizard, every time it loads, it's gonna save that setting and default to it. So now every time it loads, it's gonna have a pink shirt ready to go by default. And so the upload process, whether you use automation or do it manually, so much faster. So, so, so much faster, guys. So we had uh, moving on, we had pretend I'm cantaloupe. That's sold. Pretend I'm tang fish. That's sold. I don't even know what tang fish are. Should we look it up just so we know what we actually sold? Pretend I'm tang fish. All right, it makes sense. Guess what? We sold that on a royal blue shirt. And I mean, that that fish looks pretty royal blue to me. So it makes a lot of sense now. Pretend I'm leaf. Me and Marielle definitely laughed when <laughs> that one sold because <laughs> for a number of reasons, just pretend I'm leaf. Like I'm Groot. I'm leaf. Of course, we didn't mention Groot, uh, but shout out to uh, the Marvel movies, right? Uh, pretend I'm seaweed. All right, another green shirt. So I'm just showing you guys it doesn't have to be hard. And now that these have sold, you can, we, we charged $14.99. So we did make some profit. I always think, you know, when you're in tier 1000 or in her case, 2000, right? Tier 1000 or higher, like start making a little bit of money. Um, but also be cognizant of where you're selling, like jump back over to merch dominator, scroll merch dominator actually shows you the price points that these shirts are selling at there. It's right here in search results. So the Dalmatian shirt, $17.99 pirate, $15.99. Scary Ghost, 1999. Tree, 1998. Next one, 1999. 1999. 1799. And oftentimes, the people who sell these, they up the price when it's like peak demand. So, given that I'm recording this video on Halloween on October 31st, it makes sense that we're going to see higher prices. If you actually want to see the price history, you can click in and actually see on this chart if the people who sold this listing have been repricing it over time. So, the green bar, if you see it here, is the price. And it looks like on this shirt right here, the Pretend I'm Tree, they they did not reprice it. They just let it hold steady at a 1998 price point. But I bet you we don't have to look that hard to find some shirts that were repriced as it got closer to Halloween or maybe not. <laughs> I didn't pre-plan this, but it is typically not uncommon to see shirts that were repriced as it got closer to the holiday. You can also, of course, see the uh, BSR history and the estimated sales associated with that BSR. It's a really cool feature provided by Merch Dominator to have all this data in one view for all of these products while you're doing your niche research. Uh, again, they give me a 20% off code. If you guys aren't already using it, make sure to lock in that discount and use my link in the description. All right, guys. So I mentioned what the process is. I mentioned that I did a previous video that goes into more depth, by the way. Again, I'll link that in the description. We we saw the process. We saw the results, the real results. Okay. <laughs> Products that actually sold completely passive. When they sell, they get fulfilled by Amazon. I love Amazon merch for that. We just get paid out a royalty, no ad spend involved on these sales, by the way. So pure profit. And now these are stuck on Amazon forever in their catalog. Next year is going to come around. They're not time sensitive. They will hopefully drive even more sales in 2024. Now that they've got a little bit of sales history behind them, the algorithm trusts them a little bit more. They should have a little bit of an improved organic rank. Don't over look that as well. I still sell, sell shirts today that I uploaded in 2017, you know, six years ago. So now let's go back to Merch Dominator and let's set our sights on Thanksgiving shirts. Now we can just type in Thanksgiving and then hit search. Or if you're like me and you've been doing this for a while, I mean, I already have a couple um, designs that came to mind that I think we can apply the same process to. Okay. Designs. I mean, I'm trying to find one right now organically, or I can just go back up to the search. I was thinking, you know, the Thanksgiving recipes exactly like this. So these recipes, it depends on how you actually want to structure the uh, actual design. You can make like generic nutritional information if you wanted to, or if you actually want to tailor the nutritional information to the specific uh, food, you can also go that route a little bit more work. Um, I'm just saying there's two ways to go about it, really. You know what I mean? Um, but we could even do the same thing like mashed potatoes and sell it on white shirts. We could say chat GPT, write me a list of 10 foods that are white in color, non plural. Okay. And we could do the same thing. Cauliflower, rice, coconut, tofu, mozzarella, garlic, onion. I guess it's not really necessarily tailored to Thanksgiving, but you know, I, I, you can also just keep working with ChatGPT until you get a list, right? You don't have to do the exact same approach that we did for Halloween. Like Thanksgiving is not going to generate as many print on demand sales as Halloween does. But I just wanted to show you that uh, you can chat GPT for sure. A list of Halloween or a list of foods, write me a list of foods associated with Thanksgiving dinner and then not go the color route, just co-mingle all of these together. Turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, gravy, cranberry sauce, green bean casserole, pumpkin pie, pecan pie, rolls, cornbread. Hopefully nobody's watching in 2x speed, by the way, because that's probably like going to come out at 4x speed. But you get the point. So we can basically replicate what we just did and do it all over again for Thanksgiving. I personally, this is what came to mind for me when I thought of 
Thanksgiving, doing the like recipe approach. And then for Christmas, how about going back up here in Merch Dominator to the top? And um, there's the elf. So you guys remember the elf themes like Angry Elf, Funny Elf, Mama Elf, Papa Elf, right? So I'm just going to come up here to the top, type in the word elf. And then I'm going to switch this to in title. So the title has to contain the word elf. Sometimes the three letter words, they are a little bit weird with like indexing. So I like to, if it's a three letter word that I'm only searching a three letter word, I might switch it to in title. Okay. And now we've got a bunch of elf designs, but there's, you know, this is kind of what I was talking about. The gamer elf. There's another one here that said the youngest elf. Okay. We can definitely automate these. Now we can't automate the controllers in the gamer elf design. Some things are sacrificed when you use automation, but you can, of course, like this is completely in your court. You don't have to use automation to sell in these niches. I just wanted to show you that with Merch Dominator and ChatGPT, it's a great place to start your research process and your design process. Okay. Elf squad, the Bah Humbug elf, Santa's favorite elf, gamer elf again. I'm sure nurse elf is going to be a big one. Sarcastic elf, fix it elf. Behind me, there's one that says uh, stylish elf. All right. So hopefully you guys learned something in this video. Hopefully you appreciated that I showed you real results as a follow-up to a video I did not too long ago to show you that this stuff really can work and that I'm actually out here doing it. I'm not just making YouTube videos about it. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, Merch Dominator's linked at the top of the description along with the 20% off code and the video with the full process that I dropped a few weeks ago is gonna be linked down there as well. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you tomorrow with a new video.